First meal in Korea before going to sleep for the night was Myeongdong Kyoja, which only has four items on the menu. Probably won't be the best meal you'll have in Korea, but it's a comfort classic and it's definitely still worth trying. Then for lunch on our first day in Seoul, I picked a restaurant that specializes in grilled freshwater eel, which is a food that I think a lot of foreigners don't even think to try in Seoul. And these eel restaurants will literally pull them live right out of the tank and start cooking it on the grill for you, so it's the freshest that most people will have the opportunity of trying. And you'll usually have a few options between just having it salted or having it glazed with soy sauce or a gochujang sauce, and we chose one of each of the latter. It does take a while to cook and trim, but it is so good. I really recommend trying it in Seoul, especially if you're a fan of Japanese unagi. We walked around the Insadong neighborhood after that and made our way to a cafe on the top floor of this cute plaza. And yes, it was a poop themed cafe. They have all kinds of poop and toilet paraphernalia all over, which is just funny and cute in this weird way. They even serve some of their drinks in a toilet mug and we shared a rose latte and a croffle. There's a huge variety of handmade goods all over the plaza, but we decided to get our caricatures done by a local artist here. The price was very reasonable, and the artists are so talented and also fast. This was the finished product, and we definitely look better looking than we are in real life, but I also feel like he got little details pretty accurate, like Ed's jawline. For dinner, we went to Gwangjang Market, and listen up, because I'm going to tell you the best places to get two of the most popular dishes, and this is according to locals, not tourists. So for Bindetok, you have to go to Sunine Bindetok, which has the crispiest and most delicious mung bean pancakes. We also ordered live octopus because Ed wanted to try it for the first time, but honestly, it's whatever, just get more Bindetok. Then for beef tartare, you must go to Yukke Tamitib. They serve this free soup with your meal, which is spicy and delicious, but obviously the big star is the classic beef tartare. It comes with a raw egg yolk on top, and it's so savory and perfectly seasoned with some sesame oil, and the sliced Korean pear at the bottom just gives it this refreshing, sweet balance, and ugh, it's so perfect, you just have to try it for yourself. We still had room, so we went to a random stall for some Maya kimbap and tteokbokki. The kimbap was just okay, but the tteokbokki was good. And we did pass by the Netflix knife cut noodle lady, but we didn't want noodle soup on this day, and our stall has become such a huge spectacle with a wait, so we skipped on this one. For dessert, the line for the kwabegi donuts was too long, so we got hotdog, which we were more than happy with. They fry them fresh, so they're so good. Just be careful of not burning yourself on the molten sugar inside. Hot. The next day for lunch, we had a reservation at Kebang Shikdang, which is a restaurant specializing in raw marinated crab that's a bit more upscale than the places you would typically get this dish. Not gonna lie, it's very pricey compared to other places, but everything was done so well and the crab was amazing quality, so we really enjoyed it. Just make sure you book a table at least a few days in advance if you want to go because they do get fully booked. For dessert, we went to Ichi Seoul with my mom for their mugwort soft serve.
The next morning, we went to Cafe Libre in the Myeongdong Cathedral for coffee. It has a Lucha Libre theme with all of this artwork on the walls. And the coffee was okay, but it has really limited seating unlike a lot of other cafes in Seoul. So I'd recommend coming early or just doing a grab and go. There was a convenience store also in the same building, which was our breakfast spot. We got a bunch of things to share, but our favorite was the tuna kimchi fried rice onigiri. For lunch, we went to the Shincheon neighborhood to a place called Yana Chobap, which literally translates to salmon sushi. We got 30 pieces of sushi for 40,000 won, which is less than 30 US dollars, which is just insane. Our favorite was the flame broiled salmon, but everything was good and you just can't beat the value. After lunch, we walked to a coffee shop a few blocks away, just a small, cute neighborhood spot that faces a larger street. But if your caffeine tolerance or your caffeine needs for the day are pretty high, this is your spot. We got an iced Americano each, and it was by far one of the strongest coffees we had during our entire trip in Seoul. For dinner, we went to Sandulhe, which is a Korean Jongshik restaurant that's more of a local spot. It's a formal Korean cuisine dinner with a really wide variety of dishes that's still extremely affordable. Quick light breakfast the next morning at a cafe. We got another two iced Americanos and a yummy pretzel salt bread bun for breakfast. Then later, we ate lunch at Masan Hemur Agujim near Bukchon Hanok village. Our two main dishes were actually delivered to us by this waiter robot. You pick up your food and once you're done moving it to your table, you press OK on the screen to dismiss the robot and it'll be on its way. The braised monkfish is popular, but I ordered the mixed seafood braised just to have a wider variety instead of just monkfish. And it came with octopus, shrimp, mussels, fish roe, and a lot more that I'm forgetting, all braised with bean sprouts. And everything was really fresh, and even though it's really red, it's not as spicy as it looks, just very flavorful and fresh. We went to the Osolok Tea House afterward for tea and dessert, and they have multiple locations in Seoul, and all of them are super cute and aesthetic, along with having good quality tea. And sadly, they were sold out of the waffle and ice cream set that I wanted, so we got tea along with a roll cake. So I realized as soon as I had my first bite that the center of the cake was really cold from being half frozen, so that was disappointing. We thought the flavor was good though, so we did still finish it. Alright, you might judge us for this, but we were so tired from walking all day that by dinner time we just wanted something fast and convenient, so we just went to McDonald's. America are bready. We're better. Oh, it's no. Google burger. Mm. Oh, God. Mm. How was it? Not bad. Mm. Mm. I like this one better. Now let's try mozzarella stick. Lunch the next day was at a fine dining restaurant called Bichena for my mom's early birthday. It's on top of Lotte World Tower with sweeping panoramic views. They have one Michelin star and they do elevated traditional Korean food. I know a friend's a baby, something's on my mind. 
so I apologize for taking all this time But I got to tell you who No, get up, pretend I don't love you like I do there was a lot of attention to detail in all of their dishes, and we all thought the food tasted good. Also, I did appreciate that they served my mom seaweed soup for our final savory course, which if you didn't know, is traditionally eaten in Korea to celebrate someone's birthday. The downside is that I did find service a little bit lacking, especially for the price point, and I found the vibe a bit more strict and stuffy than other Michelin star restaurants we've been to, but overall, we had a good time. The next morning, we started out with coffee at Cafe S with Seoul, which is one of the cutest cafes, even though it's actually a cafe that's themed after the cartoon characters for a big bank. Literally like Capital One Cafe in the US, but way cuter. Then I headed to a perfumery in Hanok Village where I booked something for me and my mom to make our own custom perfume. We got to take a little spray bottle and a full-size bottle home with us after we made our own, and this was so unique and fun to do. I booked it on Airbnb Experiences, and we'll link it in case you're interested. For dinner, we went to Mala Gongbang, which is a mala tang and mala dry pot chain where you basically dump everything you want and get charged by weight before they cook it. Ed did get a little overzealous and got way too much, but it was very good. Such a